It's the 11th day of November 2021. It's day 12 of the constipated parties. 26 in Glasgow. Hope everybody's doing good. And this Thursday. That's enemy number one for climate activist. This should be your number one target, International Atomic Energy Agency. And then after them, it should be that creature right there. And so both of those are cheerleaders for the nuclear complex, the nuclear industrial complex and the military industrial complex. Because that's what she's doing. She's regurgitating everything the United Nations says. Hook, line, and sinker, perfect Manchurian candidate. So these are not protesters at all. These are cheerleaders. And what did George Bush call the United Nations? I forget. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. So he just called United Nations. We have Nations. before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves. He just called United Nations the New World Order. So why would you want to give all your rights away to a corporation? Dana Durnford. I'm also known as the nuclearproctologist.org. And you can call in, because I don't hide away from anybody, at 709-589-4406. I am here to go to war for you until you learn to go to war yourself. <clears throat> Major Dildo commented last night, Durnford keeps lying. Nuclear radiation doesn't cause global warming, and it's a well-known fact that carbon emissions is the cause, he says. Well, carbon emissions don't cover the planet and radi radioactive fallout. Carbon doesn't pulse energy every second. Radi carbon disappears soon after. This is a scam they're running against you if you think carbon is going to heat up the planet and not radioactive. These plumes you're looking at is Chernobyl. I'm sorry, Fukushima plume. Think about it. It saturated the entire planet, a continuous plume, an invisible plume of radi radiation pulsing energy every second at the speed of light. So it's pulsing energy every second at the speed of light wrapped around the entire planet since the 31st of March, 2011. And if you look at the extreme events going on right now and the mass die-offs of whales and seals, you can go right back to post-Fukushima, but not pre-Fukushima. It's, it's obviously... Japan's nuclear meltdown. We have the radioactive numbers showing up on the coastline, a million becquels a square meter. You had 20 million particles of radioactive iodine, 131 per liter, fell on the U.S. Per liter of rainfall from a continuous plume every time it rained. This was you had a, another separate study from Canada showing 220 million atoms of iodine-129. What part about it is it that this planet can't wrap their mind around? That we are having an event because... And then, so, the constipated parties, 26, is the, they're the military-industrial complex, for God's sakes. 
United Nations forces invade North Korea, September to October 1950. <clears throat> I don't know why they use September and October. There's four million, United Nations had four million, million casualties. At least two million were civilians. Like, that's dead. And how many do you think were actually maimed? How many millions? Tens of millions maimed. And the United Nations burnt down every community in North Korea, and now for 67 years have tortured North Korea. Tortured North Korea. The United Nations is a military industrial complex disguised as some weird creature for 75 years. They've been around like a vampire for 75 years, lurking in the dark. Oh, my God. So, Fukushima reconstruction scumbags showed up at the constipated party's 26. That, uh, that's an insult to this planet and 8 million species. The scumbag Japanese government on Wednesday held an event at the Constipated Party 26 Climate Conference, which is meant to cover up what Japan has got done to the planet. These are hideous, monstrous liars, by the way. And of course they're going to go to the UN. UN has covered their asses really well. On the 10th anniversary this year, the United Nations had all the media come out and say, United Nations experts say radiation from Fukushima will have no effect on health. This is absurdness. This is pure evilness to, to even suggest that multiple nuclear reactors melting down had no adverse effects on health. This is ludicrous. This is Twilight Zone and then some. By the way, this is United Nations Scientific Committee numbers. So this row right here is corresponding to the communities over there in Japan. This is per square meter of just cesium. This, this is ludicrous. A's and B's and C's and D's and E's and F's. So this row, second row, the first row is people in, that are living in a nuclear wasteland. The next row is how much radiation per square meter of just a gamma. It's disgusting. The United Nations is claiming that there's no adverse health effects from that. They should be removed. They, that company should called United Nations should be dissolved. Their assets should be liquidated to pay restitution to the victims from Fukushima and other catastrophes to help cover it up. They're, that's the military industrial complex. That's all the United Nations is. It's 195 militaries. And people are down there supporting 195 militaries. Idiots. Japan highlighted reconstruction efforts that have been made in a nuclear wasteland, including promoting the use of this is absurdness, the use of renewable energy and hydrogen to combat global warming. Here's their idea, this is their radioactive plume causing global warming. You dingbat lunatic planet out there. It's radioactive fallout killing all the species worldwide and they're talking about global warming. Japan, there should be a big wall. You should build a wall around Japan and stick a roof on it. Progress has been made in decontamination work, says this despicable sack of shit, the Fukushima governor. This creature, since day one, he never slept for four days originally when the nuclear reactors melted down. He was in the media all day, all night, 24 hours a day. I, I kid you not. Telling them there was no radiation. It, it's just absurd. And the world sits in silence. Like morons, like, like uh, zombies. Adding that the radiation levels in the air in the prefectures have decreased significantly. 
radiation levels in the air. There was 865 cancers, extra cancers in 2012. They're a major dildo, uh, the people that are censoring me. For a paycheck, you're going to murder all these people for a paycheck. At some point, because they leave a, the people that are censoring us left a trail, see, paper trail. At some point, we're going to find out who these people are. You're going to get held accountable. Japan Prime Minister visits the crippled Fukushima nuclear power plant. Well, if you look at the picture, it's actually Photoshop. He never actually went to the nuclear plant. You see the stack behind him, the two stacks? And uh, I'll show you. The, the stacks, they got reactor three behind them. But look how clear the first picture is. In the second picture, they photoshopped it over behind. It's not blurry, it's just a bad picture. So you know how a camera works. You can make it blurry in the background, but it's still high quality blurry. So see the stack? The blue stack? They got translucent um, umbrellas, and you can't see the stack through the uh, translucent umbrella. You can see it to the right in the bottom, but not in the left, It's because it's Photoshop. But you can also see that some of the umbrellas are actually missing from the picture. Look at that. Now, you see this hand behind him? There's nobody there. He'd have to be on the outside of the fence somewhere for him to stand there because he's right up to the fence. And you look between his legs and on both sides of him, unless the guy behind him is a pencil, there is nobody behind him. So they photoshopped in that extra umbrella. Now here was another picture of where they've done the same thing. The background is not blurred out, it's faded. And you can't, camera lenses, you can't make a camera lens do that. It's high quality, it's blur, or it's high quality front, clear, and a high quality blur that matches up in the background. They're symmetrical. You can't have two different shades in the same lens. Right, and they've done the same thing with him. So it's, these are photoshopped, and, and you know why they're photoshopping it? Because it's a nuclear, multiple nuclear meltdowns. IAEA's never actually went there. Look inside a reactor three, for God's sakes. That's a photoshopped. Big brother, big sister is glowing from the generosity of a nuclear power plant donated $31,000 to a Boys and Girls Club. That's pretty cool, isn't it? See, Dana, they're not always bad. <coughs> Here's some hard pictures to look at, but you got to look at it, otherwise what's the point of being on the planet? This is children from Chernobyl. There's two of these pictures I'm going to show you. And they don't even got a TV set. Yeah, not even a radio. But they're out there in the local communities trying to buy people off. You got children that are abandoned, and thousands of them, in Belarus and Ukraine, because of dis debilitating and disfiguring uh, congenital abnormalities from the radiation. So, in comparison of Fukushima and Chernobyl, Chernobyl was a 200 ton reactor, it was a brand new reactor. Japan's reactors are 800 tons. They're pure uranium, pure plutonium. Chernobyl was mostly graphite, which is not radioactive. It's a moderator. But Fukushima was multiple reactors that had decades of reactor cores stored at the top of the buildings, and they were lost also. The uh, fact that uh, the reactor in Japan is a uh, hundred times more powerful than the one in Chernobyl and in fact the two stations, the two power plants in the Fukushima region uh, produced the world's biggest joint amount of energy and this is... So they were the biggest reactors in the world 
and they were a hundred times the size because they're using pure uranium, pure plutonium, except for reactor three in Japan. That was mixed oxide fuel, MOX fuel. It's reclaimed hot particles from fuel that's already gone through a chain reaction. It makes it several billion times more lethal than the first time it goes through a chain reaction. Doing it a second time is actually a crime. They recognize that in Canada and the United States where it's illegal to do that. Only scumbags in France and the United Kingdom do that shit at La Hague and Sellafield. Chernobyl was brutal, though, don't get me wrong, but it's nothing compared to Fukushima. Constipated Party 26. Stay at the Constipated Party 26 for as long as it takes to get a deal. Sturgeon urges Johnson, this piece of his work of art, Sturgeon. The Prime Minister returned to Glasgow on Wednesday as the draft text of a potential climate agreement written and published by the military industrial complex calling for a prison planet. And Boris, of course, before he got elected, was trying to shake radioactive fruit juices from a nuclear wasteland. As you can see, like the way he's drinking there, the can is not open. It's just a picture. It's disgusting that people would do that. It's revolting. That's why he got elected, by the way. Stay here for as long as it takes until we get the deal that must be done in Glasgow. To where it needs to be, she said. The Prime Minister should stay to talks to push this deal as far and as fast as we possibly can. He said, I welcome the fact the Prime Minister is back today. He knows I stand ready to do anything and everything to assist these efforts. But our focus must now be for every moment that this summit is here in Glasgow. I'm pushing that scale of ambition on money. As far as we can go. They want the money. Meanwhile, they're going to build a new nuclear power plant. And they're going to put it in a farm country like the rest of their farm uh, nuclear reactors and their reprocessing facilities. This is absurdness. Because if you eat the food, you're going to get sick. You're going to get up to 1,800 illnesses and diseases. You don't think that's a crime? Because it is a crime. Why do they build all the nuclear power plants in farmland? Because they love you so much? Or because they want you to eat the radioactive food, get sick, and die? Guess what? It's the latter. Because that's not an accident that all nuclear power plants are built in farming countries. That's a future one in the United Kingdom in farming country. What kind of sickness do you got when you're doing stuff like that? Don't eat anything out of Japan. Half the country was banned for, from 55 countries for 10 years. Then the nuclear industry got in key positions and they just lifted the embargoes on nuclear food, and I mean nuclear food, picking it up right alongside of thousands of one-ton bags of radiation so they can ship it to your countries. Actually, demons. Speaking of demons, interview with the father of global warming. That's Mr. Global Warming. This is Mr. Net Zero. And everybody ran, met, the history of the carbon footprint. How can we bring your footprint down? <laughs> the idea of a personal carbon footprint was popularized by a large advertising campaign from a company, fossil fuel company known as BP, from a fossil fuel company. Fossil fuel company. <laughs> carbon footprint. There's no irony in that, is it? They're all down there, get rid of this. Fossil fuel. Oh, oh, and don't forget Mr. Climate Change. Mr. Death, Dr. Death, James Hansen. Mr. Climate Scientist. Mr. Hockey Stick Graft. In fact, his single testimony, he said NASA's 99 points, stupid confidence that the warming 
was caused by accumulations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and not a random fluctuation. Not a random fluctuation. He's profited off this Mr. Profiteer, right? Hansen's testimony was pivotal point in the history of global climate change and marked the official beginning of the global warming policy debate, which is going on right now in Glasgow. And then they stole global warming from this guy, and the United Nations military industrial complex stole net zero from that guy, and then the United Nations stole carbon footprint from BP's campaign. But BP done it. We had a campaign to blame you for what happened because of BP oil spills. That's what the campaign was about. How do we get them to blame themselves instead of pointing at us? So they created this blitz and everybody start turning on each other. Like, you got a carbon footprint. Instead of suing BP who created all the mess in the first place. And then they bombarded you in the last couple of years with advertisement on TV. Sounded great to me. Thanks, okay. Gillian. Happy to help. So what are you thinking of doing for 1010 yourself? What, are you kidding me? I, I thought that by doing this voiceover, that was my contribution. Right. No, absolutely. No pressure. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Jesus. So if you, if you don't go along with your global warming, they blow you up. On TV, can you imagine how many children couldn't sleep after that? Imagine how many children got poisoned from eating the radioactive food around nuclear power plants for the last 60 plus years. Yeah? Imagine how many people have been poisoned from Fukushima and radioactive fallout. This is day 19 right there. It, it's a continuous plume. It doesn't stop. It's never going to stop. We won't even try to stop it. We're too busy pretending we're, we're fighting it by attacking coal for some reason. UK, United Kingdom, who got those commercials, by the way, launches Urban Climate Action Program. Launches Now, they, they've launched a lot of these. Here's another one. Right, kids, just before you go, there's a brilliant idea in the air that I'd like to run by you. Now, it's called 1010. The idea is everyone starts cutting their carbon emissions by 10%. Thus, keeping the planet safe for everyone, eventually. Now, this hasn't got to be a huge thing, but I would love it if you and your families would think about doing something. What sort of thing, miss? Well, like getting your dad to insulate the loft, or taking your next holiday by train instead of flying, or buying energy-saving light bulbs. We're thinking of using our car less. I'm going to cycle to school. That's fantastic, Jemima. Now, no pressure at all, but it'd be great to get a sense of how many of you might do this. Just a rough percentage. That's fantastic. And those not? Philip and Tracy. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Your own choice. OK, class, thank you so much for today, and I will see you all tomorrow. Oh, just before you go, I just need to press... This little button here. Now, everybody, please remember to read chapters five and six on volcanoes and glaciation. Except for Philip and Tracy, of course. They got blown up. I mean, you got to be some incredible scumbags just to think it up. But you got to be a degenerate to actually put that on TV and terrorize kids everywhere. And they ran it all day, all night, all weekend, nonstop. And they bombarded them in school with propaganda. It's outrageous. That's she, that's she went for you, right? That's what they do for a living for 75 years now, is attack us and our children. Cities have played a key role in driving the adoption of a net zero target over a thousand cities. Uh, with the assistance of C40 cities financial facilities, cities also pioneer in deployment of solar PVs in public schools and our critical public health care facilities. 
contributing to a green and just recovery. And uh, don't forget to get your food from around the nuclear power plants so we can kill you. The ultimate evil, building nuclear power plants and farmlands. The ultimate betrayal, yeah? Constipated Party 26, what's the draft climate agreement says and why it's being criticized? There's Mr. A useful Idiot himself. Alok Sharma will not have made many friends in the text itself as the host and chair of the summit. It is UK's responsibility to pull together all the negotiating texts which have been submitted and agree over the last week into a coherent overall agreement. So Conference of Parties is meant to get your attention. It's not, they already got the draft drawn up 15 years ago. They tried to, to push it through many times. They're gonna, this time they're hoping under a different label to punch it through. Right, the conference of parties is all the media for 13 days makes everybody sick to their guts. For 13 days, worldwide, everybody bombarded with this constipated party, 26 uh, gag. And so then on the 13th, they're like, "Okay, well here it is. We got a plan. We all agreed on something." Yeah, you're all one and the same. You're. you're your United Nations, 195 military companies, uh, militaries from different countries, 100, 195 countries. And and you're what? You're going to do something good? Militaries don't go do good things. You know, like if those people, I'm glad I'm being censored because if they weren't here censoring me, they'd be home raping their pets or their children, right? But they're not going to include radioactive fallout from Japan covering the planet and any of the equations. You know what? Because they're monsters. They're actual real life monsters. Real life goblins. But it's, it's better to equate them with monsters because that's what they actually are, inside and outside. The, this conference of parties, this COP, COP, Constipated Party to the UN Corporation, known as United Nations, also known as the Military Industrial Complexes, Framework Convention on Climate Framework. So they need this to cover what they're doing. All the 75 years of nuclear fallout is going to catch up. They knew that. And so they created this conference of parties to bring everybody on board to what George Bush told you at the beginning of the show is the New World Order. That's what he called the United Nations, the New World Order, which is a whole bunch of countries stealing the sovereignty, sovereign, sovereignty of all the people in all these countries. And we're supposed, even though they have no, they have actual no ability they're not legal. They can't change your constitutions or Magna Carters or Bill of Rights. They're the same as McDonald's. They have the same structure, the same charter. They're a corporation. But they've been put on a pedestal by the military who owns the media and the nuclear industry, which has now captured our regulators and our universities and our medias. And so they have this total awareness, total control of information. They own all the social networking. You know, it's interesting that anybody can have a conversation except for Dana for some reason. I can't have a conversation. I got 23 people on a show I've been doing for 10 years. Think about that now. And my, my, my shows are, I can be rapping shit on a stick like a goof and picking my nose, I'd have 30,000 people on my show right now, right? But because I choose to have a conversation, a real conversation, I'm a threat to the perpetual lying scumbag machine, the perpetual idiot machine, full of useful idiots. The whole system is full of useful idiots. That's the people that censor you and everybody else. They get paid, right, to, to go to a business and sit around like Google and Facebook and Twitter 
and censor anybody having a conversation. <clears throat> You're only allowed to be an idiot. You can't have a conversation. And they're willing to do it because they're morons, right? That's, they know they're morons. Nobody needs to tell them. The, the people that censor us, are more, they know they're morons. They got no illusions. They're, they're happy to have a little bit of authority where they can screw over somebody, which is okay. Like I say, I'd rather have them censor me than home raping their pets and their children. Agreements where countries must come forward with strengthened commitments to act. Countries must come forward. <clears throat> but they're not going to act on the actual documentation from the major institutions themselves after the nuclear meltdown. They're not, not going to acknowledge that as part of the equation, which means they're incredibly evil. There are two main areas for this. One is emissions, but not not the emissions of the radioactive fallout, still ongoing, invisible plumes, unprecedented in human history, catastrophic, cataclysmic. The other for the developed countries is financial assistance. So they want the money. This is $100 billion a year, and they want it every year. It's a stick-up. It's, we're being hijacked. It's extortion. Oh, if you don't give us the money, then the whole planet is going to collapse. Well, the whole planet is collapsing because of Fukushima. And you morons are in a position to actually do something about it, and you won't do nothing about it. You despicable cowards. You incredibly despicable cowards. You revolting despicable cowards. You incredibly despicable cowards. You despot, you just you traitors. It's sedition, no matter how you look at it. These people should be lined up and shot for what they're doing. And second, that at least US 500 billion should be provided to the UN in climate finance to this corporation known as UN over five years to 2025, with half of it going to help countries adapt to climate change. But they don't tell you what they're going to do with the other half. They need it for operating expenses. Usually it's 90% of the money they raise goes into administration. 10% actually goes into getting something done. It's a big Ponzi scheme. Just one, they can't fix the climate change. It's radiation. If you're not going to admit what the problem is, that's a map from a German institution of the radiation disseminated through the Pacific Ocean in six years. But this is just three weeks of radio airborne fallout. And they're only acknowledging the xenon 133, which decays in the cesium 137, by the way. The whole system is absurdly corrupt. But half of it is going to help countries, and nobody knows where the other half is. <clears throat> A number of arrests at the constipated. Party 26 reaches 70. Goblins have had several hundred engagements. There's 10,000 of them. How could you not? You had 100,000 protesters. They weren't protesting. They were cheerleaders. Please, you got to give United Nations everything they want. Come on. We came all the way down here to tell you to do exactly that thing that you shouldn't be doing. You shouldn't give them anything. There is no United Nations. They're the military industrial complex with a fancy name. I'm humiliated the planet is just throwing themselves on the sword. We helped ensure that two huge marches, marches through the city attended by tens of thousands of little uh, cheerleaders were completely successful. And I'd like to thank the uh, cheerleaders and all the gobblish police officers and stewards, stewards engaged in these operations for ensuring rights were upheld, voices were heard, and peaceful cheerleader was facilitated. They're cheerleaders for the United Nations. They're not protesters. 
I'll show you what protesters looked like. <laughs> Obviously, these the worst. This will be the worst year in history for protesting. This place for. Do it again. Put in the wrong word. <laughs> okay. Day 12. Constipated parties. This is one of my favorite uh, videos, by the way. And so, like, if you're going to protest, if you're a real protester, you need football shoulder pads, you need elbow pads, you need hockey gloves, you need baseball bats, and you need helmets with face mask on it, because that's what they're going to be using against you. Here's the proper way to protest. The clashes were violent and widespread. Hundreds of police and anti-nuclear protesters chased each other through the fields and woodland near Vallon. Get some. Get some. Roadblocks were set up Get to some. try to prevent more protesters converging Get on the area. But at one point, a group managed to block a section of the railway line. Right, and so when they're lined up like that, with their with their shields, what you need is like garden hoses or ropes with big chunks of metal on the end of it, so you can slam it over the top of it. So when it slams over, yank on it, it goes down and cracks your helmets into it. And then you can get through the lines. Cities will be the focus of the constipated party 26 on Thursday. Here's what you need to know. Whenever you hear that from something like MSN, this is brainwashing in overdrive. Do whatever the monsters tell you to do. Cities are hotbeds of climate action. Here's the advertisement they're going to attack you with. You're a demon if you don't do what they tell you, by the way. Well, hello everyone. It's great to be back here at Spurs. So many happy memories for me. Anyway, tell me something. What, what is this? 1010 thing the club is doing? Well, it means that we're trying to cut our carbon emissions by 10% this year, and Tottenham Hotspur Football Club was the first to sign up. We've changed the floodlights at Water Heart Lane, so low, low energy. Lots of our fans are coming to matches on buses, trains, and bikes and stuff, rather than coming by car. I see. Whatever, I, I wouldn't do it. It seems like distraction from football to me. That's yeah, just fine, David. You don't have to join in, just ignore it. No pressure. Right, lads, let's do some penalties. 10 10. Hundreds of thousands of people, schools, businesses, hospitals, movie stars, knitting circles, scout troops, presidents, and governments, all tackling climate change in more than 40 countries. Care to join us? No pressure. Is that okay? <laughs> and so I, I should have played that when I played I forgot that was the end of uh, her car or, um, I played the other part of that commercial early there can also be intense vulnerability from rising water hotter temperatures more extreme weather associated with climate change so this is their evidence now uh, tomorrow we're going to do the recap of the last 12 days and uh, they're gone crazy with the censorship on me. They're, they, they're gone literally nuclear on me with censorship. Such a coward thing to do, eh? Such incredible. Th Not even Dana's allowed. Nobody's allowed to have a conversation. There's really nobody having a conversation. And their solution is to get me down to 20 people watching a show I've been doing for a decade. It's craziness. Well, I'm going to obviously have to start streaming somewhere else. This is absurd. 
It's just, it's an insult. I caught any of them, I can guarantee you one thing. I waterboard them a couple of hundred times. Billing themselves are also major emitters. That's just a figure of speech, folks. I'm not going to physically waterboard anybody. Oh, Dana's going to waterboard people if you don't. I can see the, the scumbags out there right now. Billing themselves are also major emitters, responsible for nearly 40% greenhouse gas emissions. Greenhouse gas emissions. Greenhouse gas emissions from Fukushima, Xenon 133, were 450,000 times above detection levels after Fukushima. This is a disease factory machine. These, these plumes are disease factories. These radioactive plumes are extinction events for all the species. The United Nations job is to cover that up and blame it on your tin cans, your pop bottles, and your cardboard. Blame it on you, right? <laughs> this is uh, France's plume model of Fukushima radioactive fallout, just based on venting. It's not based on the actual meltdown, so you can imagine how bad it really should look. It, that's actually real. I didn't Photoshop it, it's actually real. That's the Pacific Ocean, and that's Canada and America. Uh, the model stops, but the radiation doesn't, right? This is the Atlantic Ocean. This is Europe. Like, if you're anywhere in uh, China or Russia or anywhere else, Japan, Alaska, all down the coastline, the west coast, all through the continents, if you're anywhere on planet Earth, you're, you are insects or birds or animals or mammals are being exterminated in increments over time. Now your, your time is up. All the insects time is almost up now. There's no spiders in the woods on the east coast this year on the research expeditions. And while I was out on the expedition 450 kilometers away from home out in the middle of the woods looking for spiders, YouTube, the lobbyists at YouTube, took down my site with 24,000 subscribers. Because I'm the only person really doing an educational program on the planet that's ever done an educational program on nuclear in history, actually, which is pretty pathetic. So they're blaming humans. It's you. You remember what BP, how BP done a advertising campaign that started the global warming? Let me bring it back to that. The idea of personal carbon footprint was not the United Nations, was popularized by a large advertising campaign of a fossil fuel company, BP, in 2005. Now, how many people knew that before they see me show that over the last 12 days? Not very many, right? How many people in the last 12 days, besides me, have you heard mentioned that's where I came from? How many people in the last 12 days have told you this is the father of global warming? And how many people over the last 12 days have told you that's the father of net zero? And that the carbon footprint was created, was intended to divert attention from the fossil fuel industry onto individual consumers. Right? And so UN is to blame it on individual users, individual people, rather than the nuclear industry. It's the exact same thing, that it was successful for BP, and because they were so good at it now, the word climate change gives some people a seizure because they heard it so much. And then a single testimony from James Hansen became pivotal for setting climate policies. So they seize up on these moments, and then they bombard you from thousands of, of medias and Hollywood and universities, and everybody else just bombards you with the same terminology 
until you, you start to hate yourself. Humans are a plague. And it's not right. We're not a plague. They're a plague. Fukushima is a plague. Red nuclear is a plague. The military industrial mass genocide machine is a plague. But humans are not a plague. Fake and being at the reactors, that's a bit of a plague. People that do that are... The nuclear industry is a plague. Grown food, right alongside a nuclear wasteland for 75 years, poisoning everybody who eats that food. Everybody who eats the food is being poisoned. The police have every right... Police can't arrest them because it's not illegal to poison you with radiation on top of that. And blaming you for global warming, the biggest emitters is the container ships. You produce more pollution, just a single one, than 50 million cars. And 15 of the biggest ships produce more pollution than all 760 million cars worldwide. And there's actually 96,000 of them on the ocean at any given time. So to take 15 of the biggest ones and multiply it by 96,000. So if you're going to blame carbon, which doesn't pulse energy every second, the only thing that does that is radiation. Carbon doesn't make plumes like this. Coal, oil, and gas don't create plumes that live for billions of years and pulse energy every second. Just saying. James Hansen. So when they say one million people a year die prematurely in India because of carbon air quality issues, that was based on James Hansen. His original number was 1.8 million from 1971 for 28 years, 1971 to 2009 which worked out to 64,000 people a year worldwide were dying from pollution. In the last couple of years, they, they repeated it so much they believed their own numbers. Now they're saying eight or nine million a year dies from pollution. And that all changed since the Paris Accord, which was designed the same as BP, climate change, uh, public relation bonanza. Like, first off, don't build your coal plants in communities. You don't need to build them right in the community. In parts of the Western U.S., they have the opposite problem. They're too thirsty because they face water shortage because snowpack, not glacier pack, but snowpack no longer feeds as much water into the river system as it used to. See, these plumes came in and covered the uh, glaciers and, and helped the glaciers from stop crystallizing. You can't... See, there was glaciers, now there's snowpack in the wintertime, because snow comes in the wintertime, right? But there's no glaciers anymore. We lost them uh, with about three to four years after Fukushima, they started to disappear. And by year six or seven after Fukushima, they were actually gone through the Cascades and the Rocky Mountains. And we know because we've done the research expeditions up there and done the whole range of the Rocky Mountains along the coastline to Alaska and all the glaciers were gone. And I reported on it repeatedly. So the glaciers in the summertime, the cold water from the glaciers would run down the rivers and help raise the level of the rivers. But that always had always happened, see? So the rivers were dependent upon the cool water coming down because that regulated the temperatures of the streams, the rivers, and the estuaries. And without the cold water, then you would see die-offs of all the insects and frogs and, and fish and the whole ecosystem because they were dependent upon the water regulating the temperatures. But during heavy droughts, more ice water, glacier water, would come down these rivers that would raise the level of the river and allow the salmon still to get up there in later eggs, right? Because you no longer have glaciers because of Fukushima, 
then you're seeing these uh, extreme die-offs in the rivers and the estuaries and lakes and streams because there's nothing to regulate it. And that cold water would regulate the temperatures of the coastline because that's ultimately where it all ended up to. So when you see numbers like this, these are absurd numbers. This is not a game. You don't need this to happen a thousand times or a hundred times or ten times. It's only got to happen once and it's game over for most of the insects. Once you break the food chain at that level, the trickle effect is absurd over the next couple of years. And that's why exactly what we've seen, extreme die-offs of all species, all of them emaciated. So when they talk about snowpack instead of glaciers, the, the snowpack no longer feeds as much water into the river system. They're scumbags, the people that write these stories. They know exactly what they're, they write the story that way, specifically, and then the media gets paid to put their name on it and publish it. Because snowpack, snowpack, snowpack no longer feeds as much water into the river system. So I'm going to show you the media, four examples of the media pretending they're in a building that doesn't actually exist. The building is to the left. They're going to pretend they're 100 feet above the deck there that doesn't even exist. Where I'm standing is on top of what used to be reactor building number four. The whole of this building was blown apart by a huge explosion. We are here inside Reactor 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that was severely crippled during the earthquake and tsunami of 2011. ...of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. At the end of our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. In four hours, I received the equivalent of less than a chest x-ray. 1,500 highly radioactive fuel rods inside this pool. They've got to move them outside of this reactor. Outside of this reactor, they're in a building that don't actually exist. Listen to it again. They're pretending they're in a building that don't exist. Where I'm standing is on top of what used to be reactor building number four. The whole of this building was blown apart by a huge explosion. We are here inside Reactor 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that was severely crippled during the earthquake and tsunami of 2011. ...of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. At the end of our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. In four hours, I received the equivalent of less than a chest x-ray. 1,500 highly radioactive fuel rods inside this pool. They've got to move them outside of this reactor. Outside of the reactor. <clears throat> My God, boy. So, we got 21 thumbs up on the show right now. Zero thumbs down. We got 14 people that said climate change or United Nations, the military industrial complex, can solve climate change out of 39 people. So there's, someone's out there now spamming us with accounts 14 times to get it up to 36%. Because a few minutes ago, it was 5%. So I got 40 votes, but I got 22 people on my show. Does anybody out there think that they're on top of the building to the left? Let's have a poll on that in the comments section. <sighs> Ted Richards says fake news. Colette says Totally believable. <laughs> Sarcasm, obviously. It's absurd. The whole story is absurd. And it's not acceptable. They're, they're hundred, Colette says no. Cough mixture says no. You don't need that. You don't need to reply, folks. Apologize. 
Homestead says no. Chad says no. And they're terrified that we're having a conversation, 20 people. That they got to come in and spam the poll. United Nations can't fix climate change. They haven't got any time machines. It can't be fixed. The only way you could fix it if you had a time machine and stopped all the reactors and moved them off the coastline before that tsunami came in. So the Scots down there, they burn bush, they burn bush land each year because it's perfect nesting area for grouse, and it's, uh, like partridge, farmican, and then they go hunting partridge each year. It's equal to around fifteen hundred square miles, but it creates a lot of smoke. Uh, fifteen hundred and sixty square kilometers, rather, each year to claim it. Two fingers up, which means a finger on each hand, right? By burning gross moors. Well, so they're not worried about, by the way, they're releasing a lot of this radiation back into the environment. But they're not worried, they're not indignant and upset and petrified by these gigantic killer radioactive plumes from Japan, from the degenerate Japan, from scumbag Japan. Canada commits to zero emission cars and shipping routes. Shipping routes. One container ship is equal to 50 million cars, and 15 of them is equal to all the cars on the planet. You really think a shipping route is going to mitigate something like that? All they do is lie. They don't know anything about being honest. It'll never come into the equation. India need to transition countries two and three wheeler fleet to zero emission vehicles. Which is, a, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not going to change climate change. It's not going to change the radioactive fallout from Japan. The Zero Emission Vehicle Transition Council, a global forum on enhancing political cooperation on the transition to zero emission vehicles. No one's trying to hold that accountable, look. Not a single person on the planet is going after the bad creatures. There's 96,000 of these ships on the ocean. Hang on. Just another day in cuckoo land. So, I get her done here. So, ninety six thousand. Oh, that's a few extra zeros. <laughs> Too many. Ninety six thousand <coughs> divided by fifteen. Fifteen produces more pollution than all the cars on the planet. So. A sixty four hundred times times uh, seven hundred sixty million cars um, <clears throat> 4.8 trillion cars on the planet every day. That's the equivalent of those ships. The 15 biggest ships create more pollution than all the cars in the world. So 96,000 produces the same pollution as 4.8 trillion cars. Four point eight trillion cars. Thank you. Come again. But uh, take a back seat at constipated parties. Twenty six advocates, the the coop crazies, urge Canada to make them a priority in climate planned. 
so this is all to protect the military industrial complex. They need all the resources. They want it all. And they're going to keep you in a state of fear with Russia, constant fear mongering. Electric cars promoted constipated parties 26. One massive container ship equal to 50 million cars. So what should they be going after, see? Take away from Wednesday's Constipated Party 26. China and U.S. summit surprise. Negotiations heat up. Car deal flops. The draft is sort of a wish list put together by Al Lok Sherma. Together by the Constipated Party's presidency. It's either ambitious or a total flop. And a climate scientist whose solution is always more nuclear. The car break down. Oh, we need a nuclear power plant in town for sure. I can't have that. A scumbag climate scientist at the University College in Canada, London. And they're degenerates up there, by the way. He never told them that there's a million beckles a square meter in Canada, the United States, or that... There was 20 million particles per liter falling on Canada, U.S., and that there was another study of 220 million atoms per liter. No, 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 no. He's not got the climate scientist Mark Maslin's not going to mention any of that. 1,500 atoms of sulfur per cubic meter in the air. You got all these different isotopes. The first rule of holes is that when you find yourself in a hole, stop digging. And we're still digging the hole deeper. And that's what we're doing by promoting more nuclear. Fukushima radioactive fall is global warming, dear Major Dildo, who sent me a message last night. Constipated Party 26 petitions to the UN by Moron Greta and cheerleaders declare warming systematic climate emergencies like COVID. I swear to God that she's the Manchurian candidate. She's cheering on the military industrial complex and thinking that she's not. That's why they got her on a pedestal. She's the perfect idiot. She's the perfect idiot and the people that follow her are uh, she's the Pied Piper of idiots. I launched Greta Thunberg and other young climate activists. They never interviewed a single adult uh, activist per se down there, only children. It's a very dangerous precedence, and right? And so then they censor the daylight set of my views, my counts. I probably got lots of people watching, but they're going to censor the number so it looks like I got none. Because people are influenced by that, right? Oh, he's only got 21. I'm not watching that. I'm not listening to that. And uh, can you imagine they've been doing this for a long time to me, right? I couldn't care less. I'm, I'm doing what I'm going to do anyway. They can censor the shit all they want. I still got to do what I'm doing. And uh, at some point, in the next short while, we'll have a book out and we'll make a big fuss about this. If I make a lot of money on a book, I'll be going after all of these all the time. Fukushima radioactive fallout is global warming. Asked to officially declare the problem of global warming public climate emergency. So they're literally regurgitating the constipated party's narrative constantly, but they're not going to say this is an emergency. <sighs> yeah. Boris Johnson admits that the constipated party is not going to fix climate change, okay? You're, you're not fixing it because you're not even acknowledging it. You're idiots for not acknowledging it. You're morons if you're the people that are censoring me. You're actually kooky, lunatic, degenerate lunatics 
if you're going to censure somebody that's going to... I have I stand the truth will make your life long and reasonable. Ignoring the truth is going to make it short and miserable. How can you take a job to censure someone like me? Is the confusion? Fusion energy at constipated parties twenty six. So, government dot uk government activity. This is government site for God's sakes. United Kingdom. Pumping out the, the fairy tale of fusion at the constipated party. So, Rolls Royce Eyes, a UK site for small modular reactors. That's the picture they used. But if you go look up the pictures of it, it's a nuclear wasteland. Farming, this is where they put all their nuclear power plants. All their farms are in uh, farm, all their. Nuclear power plants are built in farming countries so that all the radiation poisons the food and then you end up eating it. Sounded great to me. Thanks, okay. Gillian. And we know that we can afford to fail them. Climate plus. Reuse, reduce. So is your cardboard, which is a good idea to recycle everything, don't get me wrong, is but is debt climate change... Or is it stuff like this? 15 of the world's biggest ships create more pollution than all the cars in the world. Five European Union countries on Thursday pushed back against efforts to define nuclear energy as a climate-friendly technology. Well, like, if you want global warming, nuclear is perfect. Blow up a plant and uh, let it just keep on going for millenniums. You have all the climate change you ever wanted. But it's going to kill all the species. Like, killing all the species is bad. That's actually bad. I can't believe somebody spammed my poll to make it look... Like, the United Nations is a corporation. They ain't fixed jack shit. Their entire history, they have done nothing. They've done, if that was a company, a typical company, had it done what the United Nations is doing, they'd be bankrupt 69 years ago. Nuclear power cannot be a solution in the climate crisis. German environment minister, no. Because nuclear power covers the planet in radioactive fallout, like this model here from Fukushima, of plutonium pulsing energy every second. You gotta wake up. You gotta stand up. It's time to gut up. We have no time left. She argued that nuclear power was too risky, too slow. Why don't you tell them that it's covering the planet in radiation and heating the friggin' thing up? So next year, for their climate protests, next year, for their climate protests, We're going to have 500 of these signs for the protesters for free show up. That's our goal for the next year. We'll send down 500 of these protest signs just like that there. Fukushima radioactive fallout is global warming. Go to the nuclear proctologist.org to hear the truth. That's going to be epic. That's coming next year, you degenerate pieces of shit scumbags. A coward industry. Where were we? Three two hundred and ninety-five. We were right around there somewhere. Nuclear power climate emergency requires it. What requires that? First off, with renewables, all you need is storage, right? So pumped hydro, where you pump water up a hill. We, we can develop the technology, I'm pretty sure, we can figure out how to build a pump. And with the extra energy, you pump water up a hill. And if there's no wind or no sunshine, you can let the water roll down the hill. And you can also have, they spent $54 million on this one, it works perfectly. And so does pumped hydro, it covers peak power too, by the way. 
So pumped hydro or compressed air, you just taking excess energy and digging tunnels and using low pressure, 120 PSI. And so if there's no wind, you've got compressed air storage, enough to power your community for two weeks there. So you can use both pumped hydro, pumped water. Oh yeah, so uh, China carries out anti-nuclear combat drills. Anti-nuclear combat drills. Not that kind of anti-nuclear where they don't eat that food and they say this is outrageous. No, no, no. Like if Greenpeace twittered out this picture and said that's outrageous, they're harvesting food right alongside a nuclear waste. Right? That that would be hopefully people would call that outrageous. But they're having anti nuclear combat drills. Scumbag anti nuclear in China. Nuclear power generation is the only invention that may destroy the future of human beings. Well, China is carrying out nuclear, anti nuclear combat drills. The IAEA today admitted there is no such thing as a safe level of radiation and that the allowable standards are based on benefit, not safety. So what they're saying to you is that since 1957, the IAEA is used natural radiation, not man-made for public safety for that equation. So in other words, they're not, they're not saying nuclear has any bad effects whatsoever. And they're equating it like a banana with a stuff from a banana or a potato chip, natural emitters that are not radioactive. The industry created this, this narrative that radiation from nuclear is like the radiation from a banana or from flying across the country or sleeping next to somebody or climbing a mountain or, or 15 minutes in a canoe or 10 cups of peanut butter. Right? Which is all harmless. This is harmless. This is not radiation. You can't make a dirty bomb out of any of that. And then they use that stuff as the standard, not the man-made anthropogenic stuff. And so the IAEA, which is United Nations, this is just another example of how United Nations is murdering all the species. Why everybody goes there and says, give the United Nations all the money they want. They're going to fix the climate. We've got to close down the coal plant, Dana. All these children that don't know nothing about the topic, encouraged to show up. And the police are like, this is great. We've got nothing but bird brains. A bunch of bird brains walking around. MSNBC in the dark of the valley. This is a documentary. Uh, documents appearance finding cancer cases near a nuclear lab, which is Santa Susana. Which is Santa Susana Field Laboratory. And so, this is an old story from 2009. The, the sodium reactor they were using spit out up to 460 times the amount of radiation released during the 1979 meltdown at Three Mile Island. 460 times worse than Three Mile Island. So anyway, this mother's daughter had leukemia and she was going to get radiation treatment because they don't know any better. And she came across all these other parents and they all lived on the same street. And then when they'd done investigation, they found just the death factory machine was uh, 10 miles away from them. And California, San Fernando Valley, is uh, just a few miles away from Los Angeles. It's absurd, right? Can't so it's located right between Sim Valley and Los Angeles. 
That's the gallows laugh, by the way. Uh, nuclear medicine market is exploding. You know why? You know why the nuclear? Because people, they, they, people are getting cured from cancer, they not <coughs> No. No. Sadly. Do it this way. There you go. Here we go. So here's why cancer nuclear medicine market is, is going crazy worldwide. Well, first off, everybody's getting cancer because they're getting food from around these nuclear power plants that are always built in farming countries, right? But the problem is you get radiation therapy and it can induce and does many other illnesses in your body, some of them latent for several years. Radiation induced kidney injuries, radiation in breast radiation injury litigation because there's so many women that get radiated for a tumor one place ends up with breast cancer because of the radiation they put in their bodies. You put all this radiation in people's bodies and they get nervous system radiation injuries, radiation induced lung injuries, radiation induced bowel injuries, radiation induced kidney injuries, brain narcosis, radiation induced rectal injuries. And so when you got people eating at all food from all these farms, and their children are eating it, and everybody in the house is eating that meal all the time. They're bioaccumulating radiation. So there's 1,800 illnesses and diseases and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries and illnesses that'll manifest before cancer. There's heart problems, liver problems, lung problems, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline, Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, Down syndrome, diabetes, schizophrenia there's endless diseases from radiation so if these farms are are disease factories this these nuclear facilities are disease factories yeah even future nuclear plants surrounded by farms japan is murdering as many as they can they got farms throughout all 14 prefectures never stop producing in from nuclear wasteland all of those prefectures I got listed there were the ones that just uh, took away all, all checks. Yeah, we're not going to check it anymore. We're evil now. Evil does what it wants. So in Japan, typically, it was one to two million per, one or two per million would have thyroid tumors. Now it's, 13,646, not out of the million. No, no, but out of 40,000. And people that are sensible, like, this is awesome, all these children are dying, I can't wait to go home and rape my pets. The Real Constipated Party 26, activists, campaigners, and the public, and why they came to Glasgow. Well, they wanted to be cheerleaders for the military-industrial complex, you know, known as UN. Because that's what they done. They went there and they regurgitated the UN's narrative word for word. To avoid the worst impact of climate change, scientists, you got to give scientists everything that they want. But they're, they're not going to tackle climate change because they won't even acknowledge what climate change is. These are lunatics. Like local uh, lobbyists swarm. There's half uh, 500 nuclear lobbyists that went down there. 500. They're currently there right now as we speak. UN chief says climate pledge is hollow without fossil fuel phase out. Like. Uh, The fact that they won't acknowledge that this is wrong, and Greenpeace and the rest of them won't acknowledge that that's wrong, that should terrify you. 
That should horrify you. That should mortify you. Alok Sharma roasted after claiming he's known as no drama Sharma. And he is. He's, he's like, you got to give us all the money that you got in all the countries or the world's going to end. He's a despicable lawyer and a despicable creature. Uh, scumbag, my day at Constipated Party 26. Anything we achieve is not... A, going to be enough and first off this kid here has a better chance of solving the climate crisis than people who won't even acknowledge what it really is like the constipated party group and the united nations which is a corporation the military industrial complex climate a global climate and health alliance global climate and health alliance think about the arrogance the name your company Global Climate. And that's United Nations for you. United Nations War Pig calls for ambitious agreements on global warming goals on life support. But he refuses to acknowledge that these radioactive plumes exist. The despicable, disgusting cowards. Why Scotland's puffins must be protected at all costs. Uh, so they're trying to blame the die-offs of the birds on carbon. If you go back to Fukushima nuclear meltdown and you look for a couple of years, a decade previous, and then you look at the next decade, and when you look at the next decade of die-offs, you're going to go, holy shit. You literally will go in the bathroom and vomit because it'll shake you that much. You literally won't sleep for months. It'll disturb you that much, the truth about what Fukushima is doing. Japan's outspoken nun and author has died at 99. She was something, eh? Amazing. Amazing lady. A nuclear constipated party out in Glasgow. If the international community can't make headway on nuclear energy goals, when, if ever, is it going to happen? As protesters in France, but I don't know what they're pro or not. 3,500 people demonstrated in France as the United Nations Climate Change Conference. This is not a climate change conference. This is a devil worship conference. Global warming. It's Fukushima. It's real there, right? It's Fukushima. The world's most widely used clean energy sources had something of a pariah status a constipated parties, 26. Nuclear advocates and organizations like, they're not advocates, like World Nuclear Association is the world's biggest nuclear lobbyist. They're, they're a criminal empire. And they're, they're, they're absolute demonic. Have you ever read any of their articles? I've covered probably a thousand of them in the last 10 years. They're, they're demons. They're actually demons. They got none of the attributes of what a human should have. 100% demonic demons. 11 nuclear workers unions. 11 unions that are nuclear workers. And you know they got a lot of pull because the nuclear industry controls and captures your media and captured your universities and captured key positions in your governments worldwide. Your world, the world is ran mostly by the nuclear industry, right? It's, it's massive. It's absurd how big the nuclear industry actually is. 
a historical decrease in wind speeds over Ireland and the United Kingdom earlier this year. A historic decrease. Decrease. I still can't wrap my mind around that one. So what they're saying, right, was there was no wind, therefore the windmills won't were useless. Right? This is that's the narrative that we've been listening to now for quite a while this year. Uh, and last year and the year before and the year before that. And they refused to acknowledge the storage that I showed you earlier, right? The pumped hydro and compressed air. It's already, kinks are already out of it. They spent uh, hundreds of billions on it and it's successful every time. Over the past year, then, nuclear energy has gained new respect due primarily to the wind and solar energy storage and intermittency issues. Until the renewable sectors solve until the renewable sector solves the intermittency question it can harness stored energy when winds are calm and skies are overcast. Well, first off, let me just start off by saying wind and solar last year was equal to 300 nuclear power plants worth of energy, 261 gigawatts, whereas nuclear was 0 0.4 gigawatts in 2020. Renewable was 261. And so that's equal to 300 nuclear power plants. So those who say we absolutely must construct more nuclear plants to beat the climate emergencies, if that was actually going to resolve it, are clearly just wrong. But we do have stored energy technology with all the kinks out of it, all of it, every single one of them. Nuclear is the only other net zero source already in use. So nuclear, solar, and wind can all survive in a zero carbon world. They all play different roles from MIT scumbags. So when they say that the intermittency and that there's no storage, pumped hydro can deliver 100% renewable electricity. There's a half a million spots identified around the planet that are natural. And all you do is pump water up a hill with excess energy. And then you got peak power always at your fingertips and continuous power. And then there's $54 million on this one, and it worked 100% of the time. So if there's no wind, you got compressed air storage. If you use two of them, pumped hydro and compressed air, Nuclear is the only other scumbag. You hear this narrative all the time because they refuse to acknowledge their storage. 70% of France's electricity already comes from nuclear energy. Yet they, they caused a civil war in Niger after several decades of detonating nuclear bombs, by the way. At the same time in French Polynesian Everybody in the French Polynesian and Algeria were radiated brutally. Every community was brutally irradiated. They caused a civil war in Niger uh, for 65 plus years. They got rid of the government. They brought in uh, weapons and gave it to the opposition on the borders. And so they got rid of the functional government, destroyed every community and every family in Niger so they can get cheap uranium for their reactors. Because that's where they get all their uranium is Niger. And Niger is still in a civil war. And Niger still has a big French military set there. Because they want to pass out the weapons and cash um, themselves, right? Smaller, small modular reactors run up to about 300 megawatts are factory built and cheaper. Well, first off, that's the lie, and that's the lie, and that's the lie, because they don't even exist. There is no factories or even plans for a factory. There is no reactors. 
They're not factory built and they're not cheap. By the way, the price tag is minimum $3 billion per reactor. So you need 10 of them to get the same power as a big reactor. That's over $30 billion. That's if they can actually do it for $3 billion, they said. And second off, these small modular reactors they're talking about are going to run on mixed oxide fuel. And the releases are absurd. This is why there's none built and there's none on the market. You are able to manufacture these modulars and hook them together to create a designer output. Uh, they're going to open the black hole and everybody can go on vacation in another galaxy. They can say whatever they want because they're not, they don't exist. They're not real. And so they write these stories. Let's get something that don't exist. Utility grade energy storage that could render intermittency obsolete in the wind and solar is years away. No, it's not. You got pumped hydro and compressed air technology where they, got, they spent 54 million on that one. It works perfectly. And this has been going for 70, well, this is going long before nuclear even existed. Niagara Falls is still running strong. So when you say that storage doesn't exist and it's years away, how are we supposed to come up with solutes, uh, solutions if you won't admit that there is solutions? And batteries come with their own hazards. Only nuclear could work. It's the same boring narrative for decades. An International Atomic Energy Agency explainer, explainer, an International Atomic Energy Agency explainer. So there's people that are now that are labeled explainer. Hey, yeah, uh, yeah, International Atomic Energy Agency, can we get one of your explainers for an interview? That these modular reactors rely on a mix of inherent safety features. So the explainer said that they rely on safety features, but they don't even exist. You tell me that's not cuckoo land. Whether smaller equals better and alleviates, if not completely banishes, public fears about the danger of nuclear power remains to be seen. Well, we won't know for decades because they don't even exist. And second off, it would take 100 years before you can actually alleviate. And you can't because those small modular reactors are constantly hemorrhaging radiation. And Fukushima has already killed most of the species and heading for an extinction event as we talk. The guy who wrote that is probably going around sniffing bicycle seats as we talk here right now. Yeah, you got the father of global warming and the father of net zero and you got the history of carbon footprint. How are we going to get that smaller? I don't know, but it, it looks pretty bad to me. You got BP came up with the climate change. The idea of a personal carbon footprint was popularized by a large advertising campaign, which is what we're seeing going on right now, by the way, from the United Nations, the, the military industrial complexes. Of the fossil fuel company BP in 2005 designed... The campaign was intended to divert attention from the fossil fuel industry onto individual consumers. It instructed people to calculate their personal footprint and provide ways for people to go on a low carbon diet. And then you got the father of climate change and global warming, Hansen. MIT has been shoving nuclear down everybody's throats for decades. The crazies, because they're just regurgitating the nuclear industry's narrative. They're regurgitating the United Nations narrative. Uh, previous climate change summits have had people saying we should barcode everybody at birth. And that climate change skepticism is a sickness that must be treated. And we have this piece of shit here. Humans are plagued. We have Fukushima hemorrhaging radiation. Australian professors saying global warming deniers should be sentenced to death.
And you got militant environmentalists call for executions and decisive ecological warfare. And climate alarmists call for burning down skeptics' homes. And then you got your Manchurian candidate right there. Another pole that got invaded by the nuclear industry. Another pole that got invaded by. That's desperation, eh? It's like such a coward thing to do, isn't it? That's the nuclear industry, right? It's just been going on forever. That's it for tonight, folks. I hope everybody has a great night. There is no protest, right? They're just walking around in circles down there. everybody tomorrow is day 13 that's a rather interesting thing where they started on Halloween of all days to start something and they ended 13 days later 13 days later I've worked extraordinarily hard the last four, 30, 12 days, I guess. Well, we've done a two-week preamble to this that was revolting, where the nuclear industry was constantly pandering, screeching climate change in every third sentence and every single story. We covered it uh, for two weeks. Well, we covered this for a decade, but straight. But uh, we covered it for the last two weeks before the climate uh, big party started this is abs the whole story is just absurd the whole story is absurd okay well we'll see everybody tomorrow night tomorrow night's day 13 we're going to do a recap per se we're going to do a recap of uh, this idiot constipated party 26 event and so the idea was to challenge their narrative each day was to scoop all their headlines and their stories their propaganda and analyze it so tomorrow what you'll see is all these patterns because like it's hard if you're here all the time it's still hard to appreciate how much documentation we actually go through each show right when you look at it over 13 days it's like absurd it's an absurd amount of of this story we've covered them hard this is hardcore for 13 days that we covered united nations this we've covered every facet of it now for 13 days so to recap tomorrow it'll actually be pretty good It'll actually be pretty good. Yeah, good night, everybody.
a little burnt out tonight myself. Not too bad, but. What a hateful, disgusting, despicable industry nuclear turned out to be. It's a sleeper cell, genocide sleeper cell. If it gives, give us a thumbs up, it probably won't register, but give it a try. And uh, I guess the worst thing about the show being over is all the censor, the people that censor me are going to go home and rape their children and rape their pets. So that's the sad part of me stopping, but even people like me got to take a break from evil. Have a great night, folks. Uh, great day tomorrow. God bless.